Hey, Holy Frog here. So I've been meaning to make a video on gear and itemization for playing Protection Paladin. And uh, this video is going to be for Feynman Dungeon specifically. And this is really a huge topic. There's so much different gear in Classic, and it has so many different stats that are going to affect your ability to perform the tanking role to varying degrees. So uh, what I'm going to do in this video, I have a different, few different gear setups that I've uh, put together. And these will serve as examples for what you can do from the time you start doing dungeons and until you have pretty much everything you need. But first off, let's talk about the uh, different stats that you can use. Uh, first of all, there's the strength stat. And this is something you'll find on almost every single piece of gear that you'll uh, come across. And what strength does is it increases the uh, white damage you deal by increasing your attack power. And it also increases your block value. And the thing with the strength stat is um, a lot of people assume that you want uh, the strength to get a high block value. I don't really agree with that because uh, in order to get one block value, you need 20 strength. And 20 strength is a lot. Uh, gear typically comes with uh, under 20 strength, uh, maybe up to 20 on some pieces which means that any single piece of gear usually has less than one block value on it. So strength in itself is not something you should stack in my opinion, because uh, it, one block value reduces the damage you take by the mobs by one, but only when you block. So uh, there's other stats you can go for that will give you more value per point of stat. And one of these stats would be uh, stamina. Stamina increases your health pool, and that's really what's going to keep you alive. When something hits you, the damage is first off reduced by the amount of armor you have. And armor is something that you uh, don't really find on gear. It usually comes on plate gear automatically. And there's some items that have additional armor in, uh, on top of the regular armor. As well as some rings, some trinkets that also give you armor. Uh, but usually you just get the uh, armor from gear uh, automatically. So, but stamina... That's something you can get to varying degrees on gear. And once you take damage and it gets reduced by the armor, uh, then it goes to your health pool. And the more health you have, the more hits you're able to take before you actually die. And what this usually means is that having a high health pool means that the healer gets more breathing room. Um, it will take you longer to die, so the healer can heal other people and you don't have to stress as much by keeping you alive. So tank with a low health pool, usually what happens is the healer just have to sit and heal that tank over and over and can't really focus on anyone else. So stamina is definitely important. Uh, next up we have agility. Agility increases armor, but it's just one armor per point, so it's not something that's worth considering. Uh, it increases your melee crit, but melee crit for paladins, you don't gain extra rage like a warrior. And you don't do extra threat from the white damage because Righteous Fury only boosts your holy spells. It does give you dodge though, so whenever you get some agility on gear, um, in addition to other stats that you want, it's just a nice bonus. Dodging a little bit extra, especially when you're doing big pulls, can uh, make you take less damage, and that's always good. And something to note with dodge, uh, a dodge will replace a regular melee hit in the attack table. Which means when you dodge, uh, you're not getting your retribution aura damage. So it's going to lower your threat if you have high dodge. But it's not its not really that much. And it's, I think it's better to dodge the damage and not take any damage at all over doing slightly more threat. And uh, the next stat is uh, intellect. Now intellect gives you a bigger mana pool. And that's not really directly going to help uh, with your ability to take damage. It's not directly going to help with your ability to hold threat. What it will do though is uh, it's going to allow you to cast more spells before you run out of mana. Which means that you can be more aggressive with your spells. And it will allow you to fight for longer so uh, it's easier to deal with extra mobs being pulled. And you can do uh, multiple packs after each other before you have to drink. And it's just overall a good stat. I really like it. And I think having a lot of mana, especially uh, early on, when you're not uh, that experienced with playing protection, it's really going to help. And it also means that you can uh, heal a bit if you uh, need to do that. 
say uh, the healer dies, the mage gives a frost nova on the mobs, you run away and you heal yourself to full. That's something I've done multiple times and it saved the group from a uh, full wipe. So um, intellect, I like to prioritize that on a lot of pieces whenever I can get it. Um, next stat is spirit, terrible, I would never use it. You don't really get a lot of value from it since uh, you're not regenerating mana while casting and there's better things to do, like between packs you can just sit down and drink. Uh, as far as your defensive stats go, you have uh, dodge, parry, block and defense itself. And defense will reduce the amount of crits you take and it's also going to increase your dodge, parry and your block chance. Uh, defense is kinda important but not very. You want enough defense that you're not going to get crit too much and just die from burst damage. But if you have too high defense, especially for a 5-man dungeon, it will reduce the amount of readout procs you get. And it's going to reduce the amount of reckoning procs you get. So you'll do less threat from not having as much block chance through the readout procs. And you'll regenerate less mana as well through uh, not getting reckoning. So uh, I like to keep my defense on around 30 to 40. I think that's just fine for most dungeons. And um, if I were tanking, say, Upper Black Rose Spire or maybe Darmal North, I'd do a little bit extra. Uh, 60, 70 plus is just fine for that. Because the mobs do hit hard and get in crit in there. Uh, it's going to mean you take a lot of damage. But for everything else, there's almost nothing that hits uh, hard enough that you can't survive with just uh, 30, 40. Um, the important thing is you have need enough health to just soak up those crits when they do occur. So I prioritize stamina a lot in my uh, gear setups. But of course if you're defense capped or close to it, you don't need as much health because the damage you take will be more consistent. It's just something you uh, need to play around with yourself, see what you feel comfortable tanking in. And finally, as far as defensive stats goes, uh, there's dodge, which I already talked about when it came to agility. And then there's parry, and parry is a pretty good stat. So whenever you parry, first of all, you're not going to take damage. And secondly, your next main hand attack is going to come uh, a little bit sooner. So it's going to speed up your attack speed, which basically means you're going to do more threat. And you're going to restore more mana with judgment and wisdom. So uh, it's hard to get though, there's not a lot of pieces with uh, parry on it. But if you can get it, it's for sure a good stat to go for. And finally there's uh, block chance. A block chance um, is a really good stat. It has the same problem as parry, it's hard to get. But if you can get it on some pieces of gear, uh, like the barrier shield from uh, Darmal tribute runs, uh, what it does is when you block, you'll use more holy shield charges you'll get more Blessing of Sanctuary damage and just gonna make you do more threat. Uh, and in 5-man dungeons especially, once you start getting some block value as well, uh, you're gonna block a significant amount of damage because say the mobs hit for 60 damage in a dungeon, so when you block, if you have uh, for example 50 block value, which is reasonable to have in uh, Blue Deer, then you're just gonna take 10 damage from the hit and that's really nothing when you have uh, 4000 health or more. But when you're fighting harder hitting enemies such as bosses, um, block is mainly just a threat stat. Blocking 50 damage when the boss hits you for 1000 damage, uh, it's not really a lot. So that covers the uh, defensive stats. So uh, what can you do to actually increase your threat output? And for threat output there's a few different stats you can use. The main one being spell power. And spell power increases the uh, amount of damage you do with your spells, which in turn gets multiplied by Righteous Fury. So just having some amount of spell power is going to increase your overall threat, and it's also going to increase your damage. So when you're tanking a fine man, uh, increasing the total damage output of the group is going to speed up the run. Um, the problem with spell power though, in classic, the coefficients for your spells, they're not really that high. Seal of Righteousness, for example, is uh, scaling at 10% of your spell power. So if you have uh, 100 spell power, it's going to increase the damage of your Seal of Righteousness by 10. Uh, keep in mind that this 10 damage does get multiplied by Righteous Fury, so it's actually closer to uh, 20 threat. So it's still pretty good, and of course it increases your damage on uh, Consecration especially. 
which means your damage goes up the more spell power you have. And it is noticeable when you have a large amount of spell power in your gear. It makes it easier to tank and you can really tell the difference between having nothing and having some. All the stats you can go for that increases your threat is um, spell hit. Spell hit, I don't think I have to explain that in too much detail. It makes you land more spells. So obviously landing more spells is going to increase your threat. It's hard to get though and there's just a few pieces you can realistically get with a spell hit on them. Um, additionally you have attack speed. That's not something you can really get, there's some enchants. They will increase the speed you swing at, but they're usually not worth it, uh, overgoing other stats. And then there's stats like uh, spell crit and melee crit. They double your damage on your melee swings and on your judgment. They're not very important stats to get, they're really difficult to get on gear naturally. And um, if you can get them, say on the uh, tier 2.5 and energy set, comes with some uh, crit on it. So it's gonna increase the uh, white damage you do by critting more. And it will increase your threat somewhat, but it's not a stat you should go for. Same with spell crit, it's really difficult to obtain. Um, but if you do get it for free on items you would be using anyway for the other stats, uh, it's gonna increase the threat you do. Um, then you have MP5. Now, MP5 is more mana regeneration stat. But it's also kind of a threat stat, because increasing the amount of mana you can regenerate in a fight will mean you can use more spells. This is something you typically won't get on gear. You'll get some on your death bone set, and maybe you can get a mind tap talisman if you don't have a better trinket. But other than that, it's not really a... There are other ways to regenerate your mana, uh, like seal of wisdom and judgment of wisdom. And they're gonna be a lot better at it than MP5. So usually you just want to go for other stats. So now that we looked at these stats and what they actually do, let's start looking at the gear that you can use to tank dungeons with. Alright, so uh, here's the uh, gear set that I made for uh, sort of a pre-dungeon setup. It has some items from BRD, but otherwise it's uh, mainly quest items, BOEs, and items from lower level dungeons. And this is similar to what I used when I started to tank uh, dungeons. The uh, most important thing in my opinion is that you have a good enough health pool. And a setup like this is going to give you roughly 4000 health. Which should be fine for um, early dungeons. And having a large enough health pool will allow the healer to relax a little bit. So um, if the healer needs to regenerate some mana or he needs to heal someone else that's taking damage, or just deal with something else, then having a high health pool is going to let the healer breathe a little bit. And the setup also gives you a good amount of mana, which is really handy if you're just starting to tank, because that will allow you to use more spells. And you can do less mana as well. Uh, once you get more comfortable tanking, you don't really need that much, but at least early on, I recommend a good amount. This gear setup though, it does not have a lot of defense. But the thing is, when you just hit 60 or you're close to 60, you'll just be tanking Blackrock Depths. And Blackrock Depths, the mobs there are going to be uh, lower level than you. So you're not going to get crit that much anyway. And defense, it's not that important. Especially early on. And I don't think it's important even when you're doing yeah, other dungeons. I think it's um, it's a good stat, but you don't have to uh, really go for like high amounts, especially not early on. There's other stats that are more important to go for, such as uh, health and armor. And the reason for this being that armor directly reduces the damage you take from the mobs, and the health pool allows you to take uh, additional hits before you actually die. So getting crit. It's going to double the damage you take, but that in turn is going to get further reduced by the armor. And uh, it also gives you readout procs, which can give you block chance, which, well, blocking an attack, at least in lower level dungeons, usually means you barely take any damage, if any damage at all. So let's look at some of this gear. I included the Golem Skull Helm, and this drops inside BRD. But if you don't have that, you can really just use any green with uh, stamina on it. Uh, it doesn't matter. 
The uh, quest in Sunken Temple, for example, give a 25 stamina playtime. So if you did Sunken Temple while leveling, you should have that, and it's going to be a good helm to start out with until you get the Golem Skull. And Golem Skull is uh, it's lower stamina, but you get the 7 defense, so it's overall a really good piece. For the next slot, there is not a lot of good options here. But I think the Gem Shard Heart, if you did uh, Maradon and this dropped, it's going to be an excellent piece for you to use. If you didn't get this from Maradon, uh, there's plenty of necks on the Auction House, at least should be, with similar stats. So just pick up anything with stamina on it and intellect on it, and that's going to be fine. For the shoulder piece, uh, just any green with stamina and intellect is going to be just fine. And same with cloak, although uh, right here I have the sprite caster cape. And this drops from one of the first bosses in BRD, so it's really easy to get. Drops about half the time. And uh, this will give you some spell power. Probably going to be one of your first spell power pieces. Additional, it has intellect and stamina. Uh, it, it comes in small amounts on the item, but it's still there, so it's a pretty good starting item. And for the chest piece, uh, just some green with intellect and stamina. I used one with just stamina on it for a long time until I finally got my death bone. But uh, just any intellect stamina or just any stamina green is going to work out well for a long time. So um, for bracers, I recommend the Lightforge bracers. This is something you should be able to pick up on the auction house for uh, just a few gold. And then you pair this with uh, one other Lightforge for the 200 armor set bonus. And I think the belt is a good option here. You could do the gloves as well. Those are also, uh, since those are BOE, they're easy to get. But uh, the belt has overall better stats, in my opinion, because it has 15 intellect on it. If you do want to use the gloves, though, there's a uh, belt from a quest in Burning Steps. It requires you to kill um, Overmaster Pyron outside of BRD. And it's going to give you a follow-up inside BRD on Lord Incendius. And that has stamina on it and it has defense. If you uh, don't want to use this piece, there's something called a stone wall girdle. This drops inside the arena in BRD. And this has 12 stamina as well, but it has a lot of armor. And either one of these belts is going to be uh, good for just getting into dungeons. Uh, the next piece is the Bejugal Leg Arts. And these legs, they're from a quest in Angora, the uh, Escort of the Volcano. So uh, these have stamina on them and they have dodge. So uh, they're easy to get because it's just a quest reward. And it's going to give you some avoidance and they're played with stamina. So they're a decent piece. And for boots, you have the Ashur Greaves. And these are also from a quest in Angora. Uh, it's a chain quest where the last quest is called Pawn Captures Queen. Uh, it's a bit of a difficult quest. Uh, you probably need to find one or two other people to do it. But again, this has stamina and it has dodge. So it will give you some avoidance and it's a decent starting piece. If you don't have this though, um, any green stamina intellect piece is going to do just fine. For rings, uh, Blackstone Ring. From Maradon, if you were lucky enough to get that. It has stamina on it and it has a uh, hit chance. So hitting more is going to give you more mana from Judgment of Western. And it's going to make you land more melee hits with uh, Seal of Righteousness for additional threat. If you don't have this, any green ring with uh, stamina, intellect, something like that is going to work. And for the other slot, I just picked a Band of the Hierophant. This is a BOE item, it's usually selling for just a few gold in the auction house. Intellect, stamina, just uh, good stats to have overall. And that's going to do just fine for tanking BRT. For trinkets you have Uther Strength. This is included because it's an easy piece to get. Uh, normally you can just find this on the auction house for 10-15 gold. And what this does is 2% chance when you're struck in combat of protecting you with a holy shield. 
And this is not the ability Holy Shield that you have as a Paladin. Uh, it's similar to Priest Shield. It gives you 250 damage absorb, which is gonna, when that procs, it's basically like you had 250 extra health. So it's gonna keep you alive longer, and the reduction is also happening after armor, so it's just exactly like having more health. And we'll just buy you more time for the healer to land the heal on you. And this is something you should get as a Paladin anyway, because it's an excellent AoE grinding trinket. And the last trinket is somewhat the same. It's also 2% chance to increase all stats by 25 for 1 minute. It's called Mark of the Chosen. And you get this from a quest in Maradon. So this is just giving you 250 health, uh, extra intellect, extra dodge, extra crit. It's just uh, it's easy to get and it's pretty good. So uh, you can get this as a starter trinket as well. For a weapon though, uh, here's where it becomes tricky. I think Flurry Axe would be the, by far the best choice. But on a lot of servers this will be expensive. On my server this goes for everything between 300-400 gold. I was lucky enough to get it for 100 gold when I was leveling. And uh, I don't regret buying it. I'm still using it and there's no weapon I've tried that I like more. The thing with this is it's the fastest weapon speed you can get on the Paladin, 1.5. And it has an extra attack proc, which means this weapon is going to be by far the best weapon in the game uh, for regenerating mana. So say you judge the target with Judgment of Wisdom and just keep attacking it. The, attacks, the extra attack procs in the 1.5 speed is going to give you a crazy good mana return. Uh, it has uh, somewhat lower white DPS though, so at least early on when you don't have any spell power. On a single target having extra white DPS, it's gonna do some amount of threat. But I feel like this is by far the best choice. And if you don't feel like uh, spending hundreds of gold on a weapon, there's a very close second called Hansel Sword. It's also a 1.5 speed weapon and uh, it doesn't have the extra attack proc, but it is a sword, so if you play human, you get the uh, 5 weapon skill bonus. Uh, for shield, there's different ones you can use, but I include the sacred protector, because that's a quest reward in Playlands. You need a raid with about 8 to 10 people to pull it off, but a lot of people usually do this quest when they're hit 60. Because it gives good items for other classes as well. So um, if you can do this, if you can find a group for it, this is uh, my recommended shield to get. If not, there's other items you can get as well. There's uh, some shields you can buy in the auction house. There's a quest from the end boss in Sunken Temple that's still pretty good. And there's just other options, but I prefer this one because 15 stamina, 10 intellect is really good. And it also has the highest armor and block that you can get on blue shields. So uh, that concludes my um, first dungeon setup for gear. A few noteworthy mentions here though before we move on would be uh, Mirror Song. And this is just an easy weapon to get. It's uh, high white damage, pretty okay stats for uh, physical damage. And most important is from a quest in Skullomance. So uh, you just do one Skullomance and you get this weapon. It's a guaranteed upgrade. Second weapon would be the uh, Raid Scythe from BRD. And I mentioned this weapon because the proc on this scales with spell power. So if you have say 50 spell power, the proc is going to be increased by 50 damage because it scales at 100%. So it's a pretty good weapon to use. And lastly you have the Iron Foe. And this is not a weapon you should expect to get. It's a really low drop rate. And um, it's hard to farm. So you have to do a lot of BRD if you want to get one. Or just get really lucky. If you do have one though, it's uh, the thing with this weapon. It's 2.4 speed. So your seal of righteousness damage is going to be really high with it. And because it has two extra attack procs. When you do happen to get procs, it's basically going to do a massive amount of threat. And mobs usually stick to you like glue for the remainder of the fight, once it procs. So it's pretty good for, um, say you pull a group, you get a proc on the first mob, and then just uh, switch to something else and start building aggro. So if you have an iron foe, 
and it happens to drop for you, then uh, you should be using it for a long time. Alright, so uh, this is the second example gear setup that I have. And you'll be moving on to something similar to this once you're done with BRD and you start moving up to other dungeons as well. So in this setup, um, what I went with here is the uh, two set Light Forge, Helmet and Shoulders. They both have excellent stats, high stamina, intellect, and they also have strength and agility. So with these two, you get the 200 armor bonus. And I also went with Boots of Valor, drops from first boss in Skullamance, the Kirtonus the Herald. So that's easy to get to, and you'll be doing that while you're farming your death bomb set as well. And the reason I went for these boots is they have the same thing as the Light Forge, which is the 200 armor bonus when you have the uh, two piece. So you can pair this with uh, Bracers of Valor. And because they are BOE, it's easy to get. And they have uh, really good stats as well 14 stamina, strength, and agility. So, uh,. That gets your armor up to the 7000 range, which means you're going to be taking less damage from uh, mobs hitting you. And at this stage of the game, you can start thinking about uh, getting more spell power gear. So what I chose here is the Plate of the Shaman King. That drops from LBRS, from one of the first bosses. It has uh, high stamina, high intellect, some strength, high armor, and you get 18 spell power. So this is a very well itemized piece. And if you can get this, you should probably use it. And you'll be using this for uh, quite some time. And it can work in multiple different gear setups. We also have the Cyclopean Band. And you might be unlucky and you may not get this. It drops from the Arena and BRD. But this is easy to farm. So if you've just been doing a lot of BRD, you might have uh, seen this drop. And if you don't have this, that's fine. You can just use, keep using something else like the Blackstone Ring or even a Songstone of Fire and Forge since that's from the uh, quest inside BRD to save the princess so that's a guaranteed upgrade doesn't have stamina but it has more spell power than the Cyclopean so again a pretty good piece and you probably have some death bone at this point as well so if you have that girdle and gauntlets they are very well itemized and you also get your legs 20 stamina, which is uh, the same amount of stamina as any other legs you can get this tier. So that's pretty good. And uh, that will give you the defense you need. So in this setup we actually had less defense than uh, the previous one. But that's fine because you have higher armor, about 500 more armor than the previous setup. So having a little less defense, it's not going to kill you. Alright, so with the previous set of gear that we looked at, you can tank pretty much any dungeon in the game. Uh, without the problem. But you probably still want to improve your character. So uh, one of the possible setups you can do as a tank is the uh, Light Forge 6 piece set. And what this does is you have a chance on hit to give you 95 spell power. Uh, that's a lot of spell power. And the proc chance is pretty high as well. So um, this can be good for threat if it procs at the right moment. But it also increases the damage that you do while you're tanking. And because Paladin damage is so high while tanking, uh, adding another nearly 100 spell power on top is actually going to contribute to the overall group DPS by a high amount. The only problem with this setup is it can take a long time to gather the 6 uh, Life Forge pieces that you need. And then the pieces I recommend for a setup like this would be the Helmet, Shoulders, Chest, Bracer, Leg and Boots. And the reason for this would be that these are the, in my opinion, best itemized pieces. And also lets you use the gloves and the belt of the death bone set. And this is where you're going to get your defense. You're going to get 10 defense on the gloves, 9 on the belt, and then 3 from the set bonus. And with this setup, you're going to have uh, not that much defense from other pieces. So I have included the readout cloak. This might be hard to farm though, the drop rate on this seems uh, pretty low. So uh, if you don't have this, what you can do is you could uh, just keep using the uh, Sprite Caster Drape. And then uh, for a neck piece you can use Medallion of Grand Marshal Morris for example. I've seen these on the auction house for 20-30 uh, gold. So uh, that's not too bad and it gives you 10 defense. Uh, if you don't have this you could uh, use 
Draconian Deflector, for example, for uh, 7 defense. And that will get your defense up to 40 plus, which should be fine for anything. Uh, this has about 200 armor less than the previous setup, but you get a lot of mana with the setup, 3500 mana. And you get a uh, decent amount of health, and of course the damage from uh, doing the Light Forge. So what I did have in the setup is the Nagel Ring from BRD. That's quite low drop chance, but if you get this, it's a pretty good ring. It has armor, stamina, defense. And it also has return damage when you hit, so it's going to add some extra damage to uh, the mobs when you're tanking. Especially in big packs. And I also have Briar with Reed in the setup. And this is something you might have to do a lot of Upper Blackrock Spire for. I probably did uh, 50 Upper Blackrock Spire or something. I got really unlucky with it. But uh, it should be just fine if you can find uh, Rendran or something where it's a lot of melee. You might get this uh, pretty quickly. But this is a good passive spell power. So I'll use this with the Force of Will just for the extra defense. And with this setup. Uh, it's going to be good for uh, doing dungeons with a group that has more gear. So you can do more damage and clear the dungeon faster. So it's a fun setup. I recommend trying it out if you have the 6 set Light Forge. If not, you can just stick to the previous gear setup. And finally, we're going to be looking at some more high-end gear setup. And at this stage, you start to incorporate more uh, BOE items into your mix. And this includes the um, Lawbringer Belt and the Lawbringer Bracers because they have uh, high stamina, they have high armor, high intellect. Uh, it means a loss of defense though, but you can make that up in other slots. So uh, I include the Stockade Pauldrons. They have high armor, stamina, and they have 10 defense. So, uh, and you still want to stick to the two piece Light Forge. So uh, say the helmet or the boots or the helmet or the chest, something like that. And I also have picked the uh, barrier shield for this setup from Darmal North with 2% block enchant on it. Now this shield don't have stamina on it, but it has block value and has block chance. So it's an excellent shield. Gets your uh, block chance higher, which means you're going to be blocking more, especially in big pulls. And that's going to increase your threat and it's going to reduce the damage you take because your block value at this stage should be uh, pretty decent. So um, with this setup, you have high health, high mana, high armor, and pretty good amounts of defense in the setup. So uh, this is uh, similar to what I'm currently using. I have uh, some additional uh, tier 1 pieces. I have the tier 1 chest, so I don't use the uh, Light Forge Helm anymore. I just use the Gift Skull uh, from Upper Blackrock Spire for extra defense, and I go more spell power in the other slots. But you can just mix it up as you see fit. Uh, again, like it's important to just consider the total amount of stats that you get from your gear. So you want to combine the different pieces that you have access to in the best possible order. Uh, just to have a high health pool, high mana, high armor, and enough defense that you don't get crit too much. And uh, of course, how much of each stat that you want is just something you have to uh, do according to your own needs. And uh, it's going to be based on your experience tanking, the DPS of the group and the gear of the healer. How many mobs you're going to pull at any given time is also going to be a factor, as is the, uh, the dungeon that you're going to be doing. So in some dungeons you may want to use more heavy spell power gear, other dungeons you may want more uh, mitigation. And this is something you're just going to learn by doing the dungeons and seeing what you need. So uh, if you find that you keep getting killed in a dungeon, just wear more defense. Or if you keep losing aggro but the healer has no problem keeping you alive, just uh, use more spell power for example. It's just something you need to feel out by doing the dungeons. So note that I'm still using a flurry axe in all these setups. And that's just because I really like it. But other people have other weapons they prefer, so uh, I do recommend you try out different weapons just to see if there's something you like more than the Flurry Axe. Um, I think the mana regeneration from this axe is uh, really... I would just never replace it for uh, dungeon farming. But if you find that mana is not an issue or your group is going slower and you have time to drink or uh, something like that, you can try out other weapons and uh, you might find something you like more than this. 
Before I end this video, I'm going to be briefly talking about enchants for your weapon slot. And uh, there's a few options here. There's the Crusader enchant, used by uh, warriors. And you have uh, Lifesteal, Fiery Weapon, Icy Chill, 30 Spell Power, 15 Agility. There's a lot of different ones, including the one from Badlands called Fiery Blaze. And that's a quest reward. It's pretty good for uh, just doing AoE damage. It does damage to every single mob around you when it procs. And it doesn't do a lot of damage. But it's good, at least at lower levels, to pick things up. At higher levels though, uh, I don't feel it gives too much value. The damage is pretty low. Instead, your uh, options are uh, the higher level enchants. And Crusader, what this does is, first of all, it's going to heal you for a small amount. It's going to increase your strength, which in turn gives you block value and uh, attack power. Now the enchant itself, it gives you about 5 block value. 30% uh, extra if you have the shield specialization talent. And it also gives you additional white DPS. And um, white DPS, it's uh, pretty okay for your single target threat. But it's not scaling Mirage's Fury. So, um, overall, Crusader is uh, less worthwhile for a Paladin than on, say, a Warrior. The other enchant you have is uh, Lifesteal. And Lifesteal is pretty great. Uh, that's what I'm currently using. Uh, it has a high proc rate, it does shadow damage, and it also heals you. Uh, the thing with Lifesteal, it can also crit, so uh, then it's going to do a little extra damage. I mean, because the proc rate is so large, especially with Seal of Righteousness, which can proc your enchants, uh, it's going to proc a lot. And it does do solid threat, especially on single target. So, um, this is definitely something I would look into if you just want something relatively cheap. A similar enchant is the Fiery Weapon. The Fiery Weapon also have a high proc rate. It does not heal you, but uh, it does uh, slightly more damage than uh, Lifesteal. Just 40 damage and lifesteal is 35. So this is something you can put on your weapon and uh, it's gonna do fire damage whenever you procs. I don't like this uh, too much though because getting the extra little heal is kind of nice sometimes. And also if you're tanking something in BRD or Blackrock Spire there's a lot of fire immune mobs there. And um, yeah then the enchant is not gonna do any damage. The uh, last enchants you can get are the more expensive ones. It's 15 agility. And at the time that I'm making this video, it's not currently available in Classic. But when it is available, it's going to increase your melee crit and it's going to give you a little bit extra dodge. Uh, it's not something I would recommend. Instead, the uh, enchant I would recommend would be the 30 spell power. And 30 spell power, it's going to always increase your damage, uh, both AoE and single target. It's always active because it's a passive, so it's not a proc. So it's not uh, reliant on RNG, where it may not proc when you actually need a threat. Instead, it will always just give you a slight damage increase. So it's a pretty solid enchant, and it's the one I would recommend using. But it's uh, a lot more expensive than, uh, say, Lifesteal or uh, Fiery Weapon. So to start off with, I would just recommend you get uh, Lifesteal or uh, something. And then you can uh, try out 30 spell power later on if you have the gold to spend. But I absolutely do recommend that you get the 30 spell power eventually. It just uh, when you get some spell power on your weapon and some on your pieces and eventually the uh, shoulder enchant from Silver Europe, just having a little bit spell power here and there, it's really going to add up and it's going to help your threat. So with that said, I'm going to end this video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Hold the frog out.